Oh my god. Stop it. Everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> Everybody has those days. <laughs> What's that? You're a 40 year old man and you have no idea who Hannah Montana is? Welcome to my average YouTube subscriber. So I injured myself using a scalpel while filming a tissue culture video. <laughs> And I had to go to the hospital for two nights and get surgery, so I haven't seen the hospital bill, but I have a feeling it will be expensive. I thought today a fun video to make would be a video about all my plants. I'm gonna stick to the cool and dare I say rare <laughs> plants because I think it'll be more interesting and I sell plants for a living so I just have a lot of plants and if I try to make a video with all of them it's just gonna be an hour long and like low-key kind of boring okay girl let's start the video so i may film the rest of the video tomorrow but i wanted to show you these two begonias because i'm worried that they might be dead by tomorrow i originally bought them because i wanted to use them for tissue culture samples um but then i injured myself and now I can't even take the samples. So this was the more expensive one. I'll show you the picture of what it was supposed to be. It's like literally that meme where it's like what I wanted versus what I got. This is what I wanted, okay? This is the pastels and this is what I got. For the record, I love these begonias and they arrived in great condition. I am just bad at taking care of them, lol. I took a light meter reading of the inside of this box it's about 1200 lux, which should simulate being in the shade outdoors, which is where these guys would naturally live. I gave this one a little bit of water yesterday and it perked up a little bit, but basically I'm super paranoid that I won't be able to keep these alive for the six weeks that I need to before I can actually put them into tissue culture once my hand is better. The next day. Good morning, everyone. So the begonias have lived to struggle another day. Over in my tissue culture area, I have a lot of stuff growing, but I'll just show you a few things. So this is one of the watermelon snows that I put into tissue culture in this video. It's been about three months now and they're growing really well. It'll probably be another month or so and maybe one more subculture before they're ready to come out of tissue culture. I'm also growing these white habanero peppers from Experimental Farm Network. I started them as seeds in tissue culture and I probably need to transplant them sooner than later, but they just look so cool in here. Like, look at those roots. This is the lower shelf that I have in my office and I have the Spiritus Sancti, which we took out of tissue culture in a recent video and potted up and it's been growing really well. Um, it probably almost doesn't need to be covered anymore, to tell you the truth. Um, and then I also have, in this biocoupler, some um, African violets that are in the multiplication stage. And they have grown so freaking well in this thing. And then I have some of the Philodendron Choco Reds, which we also deflasked in the same video uh, as the Spiritus Sancti. Um, but instead of putting them into soil, I just transferred them into fresh media. Okay, so this is my favorite place in the world, aka my greenhouse that I got from Walmart. When you first enter it, I have these yellow or golden kiwi fruit that I've been growing from seed. I don't think they're self-fertile and I'm not sure if the kiwis that it eventually grows, if they're golden or not, since it's probably a genetically modified organism or obviously is. This looks totally sussy, but this is a blackberry plant, I swear. And it is um, a special kind of blackberry plant that actually grows white blackberries, uh, which is kind of an oxymoron, but I'll put up a picture of what they look like. They're super cool. This string of hearts over here was actually one of the first plants that I ever got. I traded for it with someone on a subreddit called like r slash take a plant leave a plant. I've been taking cuttings of it for years so that's why it's not that big even though it's pretty old. And then most of my greenhouse is orchids. I won't go through and talk about every single one although I could. I absolutely love orchids. I wish that they were more popular like philodendrons and monsteras tend to be right now. 
I do have some cool specimens. These are Restrepia striata, I believe. Um, and then I have a few flowering right now. This is Dendrobium New Hope Mini. Um, and this is a Lava Burst Punani is the name of the hybrid here. Um, the flowers will open even a little bit more than that. But yeah, I live in Florida, which is like cheating as far as it comes to orchids because they grow so easy here. There are some orchids that we can't grow here, like for example, the monkey orchid. I was researching because one of my aunts was interested in it. They live in very high altitude and enjoy cooler climates, so I just don't think it would be possible to grow in Florida. Although for a video, I might try to grow one. I think that would be kind of cool, actually. Um, towards the back here, I have two variegated bananas, actually four if you count Musa Sarawak Mint and then the pup that came off one of the variegated banana plants. I will do a video soon putting these into tissue culture. The banana plant that's further to the back actually has a lot of shoot tips coming off of the base of it, which I noticed when I repotted it, which is the part of the plant that you'll use for the X plant in tissue culture. Look at that variegation. And then this actually came off the less variegated banana, but look at that amount of variegation. And then moving over to the left, we have the corpse flower, which of course was in one of my videos, and it should bloom in about 10 years or so if I'm lucky. These are those plants that have those very stinky, gigantic blooms that you'll see in botanical gardens. They almost always write news articles about it for some reason. I guess it's kind of special just because there's not that many of them. Um, but yeah, I have one sitting in my greenhouse. I do have, on top of the greenhouse, a 90% UV blocking shade cover. So it doesn't block 90% of the light, but it does block a good amount of it. I might actually add a second one um, for the summer, depending on how hot it's getting in here. And then over here, I have a strawberry shake. Actually, there's a few of them. <laughs> um, that one looks sad because it's rooting right now. And then I have a couple more orchids that are flowering. This is Patinara Rep Cliff Tazui Hawaii. And you can't really tell, but the flowers are absolutely huge. It's probably five inches from the top to the bottom. <laughs> I added my cast for reference. Um, I have big hands also. Um, moving underneath this table, <laughs> we have a whole army of Thai constellations. I'm getting ready to sell those, of course, and they absolutely love being in the greenhouse. So if we look below here, I'm uh, propagating from nodes some variegated Monstera aureas. Um, these have been really popular right now. I do have some over here probably ready to sell. Like for example, that one right there is definitely ready to sell. Um, and then the ones over there are still propagating and some of them look a little bit sad, but give them a few months and they'll look really awesome. Against the right wall of my greenhouse, I have the variegated orchid that I used for a tissue culture video a while back. This Alocasia cuprea is for a collaboration that I'm filming with some other YouTubers. And then the rest of my greenhouse just looks like this. And I have a little potting station on the end, of course. Good morning, Mr. Boomer! He knows he's not supposed to come in here, so he's nervous. It's okay, bud. So I also have quite a few African violets, but what I want to show you over here is these Teruno Pothos that I got. So I made a video on these a while back, just talking about all the different types of Pothos that come from this Japanese grower called Teruno World. This is Teruno Bumpy. And you can actually see like a bumpy texture on the leaves. It feels really, really cool. Also, sorry, my hands are notoriously shaky. It's like when I'm trying to hold something still, I find I just cannot hold stuff still. This is Teruno Fanfare. So another variation. I believe that the original plant that this mutation came from was just a golden pothos. I actually put together a whole genealogy tree that I translated from Japanese. Yes, I'm literally obsessed with these pothos. And then this is Teruno Carnival. So I think I paid $35 each for unrooting cuttings. Obviously, they are now rooted and I need to transplant them to soil at some point instead of just keeping them in the perlite that they're in. Now, as far as the African violets go, I don't want to bore you guys because I know people aren't that interested in them. I wish more young people liked African violets. 
Um, I tend to prefer them for their foliage and not for the actual flowers. I find that's kind of the difference between like young people in the plant hobby and older people in the plant hobby is that the older crowd seems to care a lot more about flowers and blooms. So this is watermelon snow. Uh, it's very hacked up because I've used this as a tissue sample a number of different times. This is also a watermelon snow, but it came from a different grower. So the first one that I showed was from Dew Violet and it was gorgeous. And then this one is just from some random person on eBay. Um, to me, they look like totally different plants, but I'm curious if they'll start looking more similar over time. The last thing that I want to show you guys before I go is this African Violet, which was the first ever plant that I successfully tissue cultured from start to finish. So I took a sample of its mother plant. Um, there were a bunch of babies that resulted, but this is just the one that I decided to keep kind of for sentimental purposes. So I took it from, you know, I initiated it in tissue culture, took it through the different stages, um, subcultured it a number of times, and then acclimatized it once it was large enough. So. Tissue culture is just so cool. I'll never stop talking about it. I think it is like the most awesome thing ever. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. It helps me a lot. Thanks guys.